Stop, 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 stop. Show me your hands, dude. Get your hands out of your pocket. Dude, stop. Wow. Get your hands out. Wow. Come on. Wow. Carnage in a Chicago back alley. A spray of bullets in a matter of seconds. Two officers and a suspect all shot and bleeding. It's the violent and gritty reality of what it is like to be a cop on the beat. Tonight, the officers from the smash hit TV series Live PD on policing in America, an in-depth look. Show me your hands, dude. Get your hands out of your pocket. Dude, stop. Wow. Get your hands out. Wow. Come on. Wow. In this unbelievable body cam video that you're seeing, two officers were responding to something called a shot spotter. It's a computerized system that alerts police in Chicago to gunfire. They arrive on the scene, and that's when this happened. I want to take you to another body cam view. And that is the reality of what happened in that alley. It is Friday night tonight, and this is a perfect opportunity to revisit with our officers from the hit docu-series Live PD. Tonight from Richland County Sheriff's Department in Columbia, South Carolina, we have Sheriff Leon Lott and Captain Danny Brown. And back with us is Sheriff Mark Lamb of Pinal County, Arizona. Gentlemen, you know, um, it's unbelievable to see, but I, I'm sure it's no surprise to you. It's what you and your officers uh, really do contend with out there on the street. I want to just slow the video down because the gun came out in less than two seconds. It was somewhere between one and two seconds. And so you really can't even see it unless you see it in slow motion. And maybe this will give our viewers who maybe don't know what the view from a police officer is like. Someone who goes from really normal to deadly in one to two seconds. Sheriff Lamb, uh, this was seven o'clock in the morning. Seven o'clock in the morning. Give me your thoughts on this. Well, Ashley, we've talked before. There is no normal calls anymore. We have to assume that every call is like this. You know, people criticize us a lot, but these are the calls that we have to contend with. This is why we have to take all the precautions that we can. And this notion that, uh, that a, a, a mental health uh, professionals going to be able to go out and handle a call like this is honestly ludicrous. I mean, they have their place, but responding to calls, dangerous calls where guns might be at play, these are these are calls that you need trained people. These officers that responded, I assure you, have if not hundreds of hours of training, a lot of hours of training, and they were still shot. Uh, it, that's how quick it can happen. I've been to a training called Force Science. Force Science will take you through, and it'll show you that within three tenths of a second somebody can pull a gun and fire a shot on us so this is why training is so important this is why having uh police officers protecting our streets is so important so uh the guy who was doing the shooting in the white uh, hoodie there or the white sweatshirt he is 45 year old bruce lua they've been following him for several blocks he is a convicted felon awaiting trial but on a misdemeanor assault um, one officer was hit in the hip with uh, gunfire. One officer was hit in the hand. Both have been treated. Uh, thankfully, they are going to survive and, and they were released from the hospital. Lua has been charged with attempted murder, aggravated battery, and unlawful use of a weapon. But just from my experience, that might just be the beginning of the charges that Mr. Lua will be facing in connection with this incident. So Sheriff Lott, um, I think Sheriff Lamb makes a really good point. What could a mental health professional, were that part of, uh, of the responding unit, um, were that a part of the responding unit, what, what could a mental health professional have done there uh, that would have maybe changed that scenario? Absolutely nothing. 
uh, that guy had an intent to shoot those police officers. Uh, I think he was just gathering his thoughts on when he was going to do it. And you saw how fast it happened. Unfortunately, this happens in America every single day. Police officers are faced with danger like that. And we have to make split second decisions. And you saw how fast he was able to shoot the police officers and they had to react. You know, we have to be quick or we're going to be dead. And uh, you saw how, you know, we're very lucky and very fortunate these police officers were not killed. Yeah, uh, Captain Brown, when we hear all the time on body cam videos, we heard it a lot on Live PD, show us your hands, show us your hands, show us your hands. The reason you guys ask that immediately is because of this. Yeah, absolutely, actually. And, you know, when we're asking to see hands, show us your hands, hands, if I can see them, if I, I can tell where they're at, I'm going to feel a lot safer. My, my demeanor is going to calm down. It's going to make me feel a little bit safer. I can see those hands. Um, judging from this being a shot spotter call, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they go back and find out that he may have actually shot a couple rounds in the air in order to get the officers to respond to that area. The shot spotter calls when they go out. We've got them uh, here in our city as well. It's within a matter of seconds that we get notifications on them. There'll be officers, deputy sheriffs in the area fairly quickly. I'm going to be surprised if there wasn't some link between uh, the shot spotter call and this gentleman. Um, it, it's Danny, a dangerous situation. Danny, yeah, oh, if we can, yeah. I am just, that hurts to hear this. Are you serious that this is, this is a strategy? There's a luring strategy among you know, criminals out there where they fire shots so that they know police will come so that they can fire at police? It's not necessarily a huge trend right now, but we've seen in the past that uh, suspects will do stuff just to get officers in the area and assault them or do whatever they can to them. Um, across the country, you're going to see the Sheriff Flam can attest to it as well. But these things happen. They know that we're going to come and respond to these situations. I, it's, it's not known if that happened, but... I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the area, not necessarily, not necessarily just for this gentleman, but they responded to that shot spotter call. He's the one in the area, obviously walking away from him, and they responded to it, and you saw what happened fairly quick. He had that weapon ready and uh, was ready to do what he needed to do to get away from there or just simply hurt those officers. And I know there's a lot of criticism um, of police who, you know, fire their weapons, but this is the reality that they face if they don't fire their weapons. And I don't know how many more rounds Mr. Lua may have had in that handgun that he had. Um, but if they hadn't fired at him, there, there might have been a different story we were telling today other than two officers hurt. I want to switch gears if I can. I want to take you now to a story out of Florida because this one also, I mean, if there were ever a WTF to report, this one is also just curls your hair in Gifford, Florida. Uh, a man who was originally being pulled over for a lane change violation instead decides to, you know, you've seen it, we've seen it on Live PD, takes the police on a chase that lasts for 40 minutes. So the deputy um, executes a successful stop stick deployment that, you know, partially flattens the tires, but it doesn't do the trick. It keeps going. So they do this, they do the pit maneuver. You know, you take out the back hand quarter of the car and you take them off track. Um, that works. The driver then pulls into an apartment complex parking lot where he's now seemingly cornered. Even the pit maneuver didn't really stop him, but change things. At this point, I should tell you, in that vehicle is not just the driver, but also a two-month-old baby. The driver gets out on foot. The driver grabs the child, and the driver throws the child, a two-month-old bundle, a little baby, throws the child at the pursuing officers. You can't really make it out on the video, but I want you to just listen, listen really carefully uh, to the video we're about to play so that you can hear how that last few moments played out. Here it is. He's got an infant in his hands. He has an infant with him. 106, can we get a patrol car over here to assist with getting the baby, the infant into an AC? So you heard that last little bit, stop resisting. I should note, this suspect was tackled, he was arrested, 
He was charged with child abuse, but he was also resisting arrest, kicking, and biting the officers. You know, Sheriff Lamb, I don't even know how those officers, look at them, the, the officer with the baby in his hand. First of all, the officer ca caught the baby. So the baby was thrown at the officer and the officer caught the baby, but then they got to deal with that guy. I can't imagine what it is like when there is a child present when you guys have to respond to something like this, Sheriff Lamb. Yeah, and I'd like to tell you this is an isolated incident, Ashley, but it's not. I've known uh, SWAT guys who have actually had to take a guy's life who was getting ready to slam his baby on the ground. Um, this is this, this, People will use whatever they can to get away from police, whether drugs or things are involved. These are people that have no care for life, and that's what we're dealing with. Those are the calls for service that we're going on. And that is why it is so important that our guys be properly trained, with trained, which they are. But I go back to this notion of trying to send people in there that are ill-equipped for this. It is dangerous, reckless, and we'll end up with more people hurt. So, Sheriff Lott, um, you know, this is not a story that's making the national news. And, and I know that there are many policing stories that make the national news, and it's typically when the, the attention is turned towards the actions of the police officer as a criticism. I suppose this is um, frustrating and exhausting, and what that officer did is heroic. It should make the news. It's very frustrating that the good things we do every single day gets ignored. But when a, one of our police officers um, do something bad, then that's headlines. And we do so many good things every single day. Here's an example of that. We actually had one on live PD with one of our deputies, Master Ronnie. Same type thing, a car chase, uh, the car wrecks, and he has to fight the subject who's got a baby. Just has totally disregard for that baby's life. And, um, you know, they'll do anything to get away, as Sheriff Lamb said, which includes endangering someone's life. Could be even close to them, could be their own child. Being a cop is dangerous. And, and we're seeing that now in both of these videos from one shot. Now they're having to fight someone now, we have to get physical. That, that's part of our job is getting physical and, and apprehending that bad guy. And they'll fight and they'll shoot and they do anything they can uh, to get away. All right, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to go to break. Uh, but when we come back after the break, there's there are a lot of stories that I, I do want to ask you guys about and not the least of which there's a canine. Um, a, a canine deputy or a canine officer that uh, lost its life over the course of this week and I think oftentimes there isn't enough attention paid to the heroics of the canines as well. Got that and a couple of other questions about some other incidents that were just well, I, no, sh not, not short of alarming I think across the country. We are policing in America, we're in an in-depth look, back right after this. We're back now with Sheriff Leon Lett, Sheriff Mark Lamb, and Captain Danny Brown as well, and not in that order. Um, I want to take you now, guys, to Hawaii, where there was a fatal shooting of a black man by police, and I want to give you what both sides of this story are saying about it. According to the police, um, a man named Lindeni Mignani broke into a home, sat down, and then just strangely started taking off his shoes, at which point the homeowner called the police and they arrived and found Mignani out on the front lawn where a struggle ensued. Uh, the taser was not effective on him, but according to the Mignani family, uh, or at least the attorney for that family, the police didn't identify themselves. And it was a very dark situation, as you can see from the, the body cam. I want to play some of this limited body cam that's been released. Have a look. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get on the ground now. Get on the ground. Get in the ground, no! Sheriff Lamb, it's, it's dark. It's really hard to make out, you know, what's happening there. And that's probably the, the really important piece of this story is that the uh, family attorney says that they didn't identify themselves and that this guy might have been actually pretty scared when there's a gun being pointed at him uh, and he's panicking. Do you, do you see any legitimacy in that? You know, it's hard to say. I mean, it's, that video doesn't give us all the facts. But still, you know, 
I, I would have to believe that they identified themselves, but they're still giving commands, um, which he didn't follow. And when it comes to using use of force, I think a lot of times the media wants to spin it whichever way they can. But if these officers can justify that they reasonably felt that their lives were in danger, they would be seriously injured, then they can use uh, deadly force. And uh, this goes back to what I've said all along, too, is we've got to start complying. This is a failure of people complying in the first place. This guy obviously did something that they called the cops on him for. And then when they did show up, he still fell into compliant fighting with them. Um, so I don't know. We don't have all the facts. It's hard to tell, but, you know, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's a um, tragic situation. It is really, it is really tragic. Um, it, I think I read somewhere that he didn't have a, a criminal background, so this was unusual. Um, but I do think what you hit the nail on the head there, Sheriff Lamb, is we don't know the whole story. And part of that problem is because they haven't released all the vi all the body cam video and i'm always a fan of saying don't talk till you have walked in those shoes and you've seen everything and i would like to be able to see more of the video to see if there might have been a you know a, a police identification so captain danny brown i think that's a big part of it we don't know if the police said stop police um because they're not releasing the the video it would be helpful if they released more of the video don't you think yeah and the comment on it with all out all of that is kind of a uh uh, double-edged sword you want to walk down but we we make it we spend a great deal of time in our department a lot of money a lot of time on training our deputies a great emphasis on training in our department and that's one of the things we get on scene if it's dark if we're going into a, a house where there's a domestic going on we're going to identify ourselves say hey, sheriff's department we're going to make sure it's loud and clear we train our deputies that way that it's loud and clear and this is going to be one of those situations that somebody's going to tell you that uh, maybe a mental health professional should have went out there because the guy was taking his clothes off inside a house that wasn't his and so on. But you can see just from the, the video, a mental health person or, or arriving on the scene there and trying to handle this gentleman, uh, I don't know if it would have gone very well at all for them. And that's, that's one of the things we need police properly trained to do what they're supposed to do and handle these situations. And uh, identifying yourself is one of those things that we do make sure our guys do. Yeah, I remember someone once saying to me that people, uh, that police officers will often go to a door and say police so that it can't be misconstrued for please, like police, please, as opposed to police. It's unmistakable. Uh, let me move to Massachusetts. There is a, just a heartbreaking story out of Massachusetts. Um, after responding to a call of a domestic disturbance, a police canine named Kit was killed on duty. The 911 caller had alerted to police that a suspect had, I guess, fled into some nearby woods and that the suspect was armed. So police began their pursuit. There's Kit. Ugh, I hate these stories. Um, they began their pursuit led by Kit. Kit took point, a shootout ensued, and Kit, the officer you're seeing, was killed in the crossfire doing exactly what Kit was trained to do, chasing down the bad guy. I should mention here as well, Kit was killed. Um, two officers were also shot. The suspect was killed in all of this. This is the, the tweet that came from the Braintree, Massachusetts um, Police Department, and it says, free time, Kit. We will forever miss you and always remember the good times that we shared with you, buddy. You went out a lion protecting your dad and his partners. You get a lump in your throat when you, when you hear that. And it seems that a lot of people, guys, and, and Sheriff Lott, I'd love you to weigh in on this. A lot of people really respond to stories like this. They, they respond to um, a canine officer, Kit, being shot and killed almost more than they would respond to an officer, uh, a human officer being shot and killed. Sadly, we had this 10 years ago. We had a canine named Fargo responding with his handler to an armed robbery call, and um, the suspect was laying in wait and was going to ambush and shoot the officer. Um, but Fargo uh, got a hold of him first, but Fargo was shot and didn't survive. And um, I will tell you, there was lots of tears here. We got a police funeral for Fargo, and the outpouring from the community just was great. And I agree with you. Sometimes, you know, the dog or an animal is going to get something more than a human does. And we have police officers just shot and injured every single day in America, but we don't hear about that. We, we hear about it internally in law enforcement, but the public doesn't hear about that. I think that needs to be emphasized even more, just how dangerous this job is and how these officers are laying their life on the line every single day, going back to Hawaii. Now, one thing I saw there, I think one of the officers had a uniform on. I have a uniform on that identifies me as a police officer, even if I don't say it verbally, 
uh, my presence in my uniform is just going to tell someone I'm a police officer. But, you know, we still mourn Fargo 10 years later. We have a, a road race every year. It's called the Guardians of the Night. We have thousands of people show up and honor Fargo. All right, I, um, and I, it's important to honor these officers. These canines are officers, and it is important to, to point it out. I, I have one last story I want to fit in here, if I can. Um, and it's, uh, I think we can all do better pointing out uh, when law enforcement officials uh, do, do a great job. And I want to take you to this particular story. Sheriff Deputy William Bill Smith, Baldwin County, Alabama. He and his partner had responded to a call of a distressed swimmer uh, this was just off the Gulf Coast. They dived into the water. They were able to save that struggling swimmer. But in the process, Deputy Smith ended up paying with his life. Here is Sheriff Huey Mack on Fox 10 Mobile. Bill Smith lived as a hero. He died as a hero to put his life on the line to save somebody else's. And that's what he did. He saved a life yesterday. He had a wife and two children, we should mention as well. Um, I think, you know, Sheriff Lamb, am I mistaken? Were you able to have dinner last night with his boss, the, the sheriff? And were you able to talk with him about it? Yeah, I was just with Sheriff Mack last night. My heart goes out to the Baldwin County family and also to the family of, of Bill Smith. Uh, this was a 30-year retired firefighter, wasn't done serving yet, got into law enforcement and had been a deputy for 12 years, was working beach patrol, um, a 19-year-old kid from Chicago was struggling, couldn't swim he, or, well, with, with the current. He went in and, and uh, saved him and lost his life in the, in the process. This is a true hero. But this isn't an isolated incident. This is, this is a, we have guys putting their lives on the line every day across this country. And uh, Godspeed, brother, to Deputy Smith. And uh, kudos to all those other deputies who are out there who are willing to put their lives on the line. But this guy was a true hero. Deputy was a hero. Listen, Sheriff Mark Lamb, uh, Captain Danny Brown, and Sheriff Leon Lott, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk about these important stories as well. We do appreciate hearing from you. I miss seeing you guys on Live PD, so it's good to hear your voices here on this program as well. Make sure you come back, okay? Thank, thank you. you, Ashley. Thank you. All right, thanks, guys. It is Friday. Oh, wow, that was tough stuff, and I'm sure we can all use a laugh, so that's what we're going to do, exactly what we're going to do with a look ahead at the funnier side of this week's news stories. That's coming up next. It is Friday night, and that means we're taking a big exhale, and we're also taking a look at the news we really can't actually believe is classified as news, and we're doing it with two extremely funny gentlemen. Comedian Ben Glebe is the host of Idiot Test, my favorite show title ever. It's on the Game Show Network, and comedian Christian Finnegan, whose four albums and two specials are available on both iTunes and Spotify, joins us for the first time. Hi, and welcome. First of all, welcome, Ben, as always, but welcome, Christian. Nice to see you. Lovely to see you. Thank you for having me. I don't know if you got the memo on, on the drinks. Like, I have my beer, but I think I forgot to let you guys know that you're allowed oh. to have a drink on this show. And it <laughs> well, I, I, have a, I, Maker's, I have Maker's Mark in an IV bag next to me, so I'm okay. working that. It's fine. I'm going just coffee this time, but it's oh. Oh. with the getting dug with high mug. So, you know, you never know what's okay, going on. <laughs> All right. Well, to each his own. Let's dive right into it, shall we? This uh, this first one uh, is, is sort of uh, weird, but but fun um, because it's somebody who was really relevant in 2011. It's Casey Anthony. Oh, she's in the news again. <laughs> she called the police. Casey Anthony. Yes, she called the police. Uh, this time she decided to call the police. She was at a bar in Florida. Fellow patron apparently didn't take too kindly to Casey Anthony and decided to spill a drink on Ms. Casey and Anthony, always known to do the responsible thing immediately, called for help. Uh, she called the police because a, a spilled drink is a spilled drink. So have a peek. Take a look. Hi. Can I file an incident report? Sure. What happened? So I'm still wet. I got a drink thrown at me. She came inside and threw a drink at me. I try not to make a big deal of things, but she's been a problem in my life for three years. Ben, did you hear that? I try not to make a big deal of things. <laughs> I did. I did. I understand. She's had a lot of interactions with the authorities, and so she tries to keep things cool, but getting a little wet at a bar, 
uh, crosses the line for her. I, I don't recommend that she goes to SeaWorld anytime soon, or at least not sit in the first six rows where you will get wet and you may get drenched. <laughs> Although that would be just the most delicious video ever if she called the police. The body cam on that would have been, you know, just gold, Jerry. All right, so Christian, she apparently was also heard on the uh, on the camera saying, we dated the same person for a couple of years, who is one of your sergeants. This was what the, the beef was all about. Apparently they had a common, a common boyfriend and it was a sarge. I mean, if I was Casey Anthony, and I'm not, um, I would consider maybe keeping a low profile. Uh, in fact, I think the concept of low profiles was invented explicitly for Casey Anthony. But I, I want to say, I just want to uh, pan out a little bit here and say, Florida, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for you that this keeps happening to you. You had just reset your uh, days without a national embarrassment calendar back to zero. And uh, it's, it's really sad that, I mean, honestly, you could put Casey Anthony calling the police because a girl threw a drink on her on the Florida uh, state flag. It would feel kind of appropriate. I, I mean, seriously, right? Because I keep wondering why it's always Florida man. Why is it not Florida yeah. woman? Because this yeah, one invented doing, Florida woman. Maybe she's doing a lot to actually change the image of Florida, that exactly. even the women can be crazy, too. I love that. And that's really good. Right. Just doing it for themselves. Yes, but also, right, I've known Christian for a very long time, actually, and I always thought he was Casey Anthony, so that's breaking news. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sorry. It's a whole Clark Kent Superman type deal. Okay, I'm switching gears to another favorite. This one's Kid Rock, and if any of our viewers found themselves at the Fish and Lips, by the way, Fish Lips Bar <laughs> in in. It's like Bar and Grill in Smithville, Tennessee. Uh, you may have gotten treated to just more than a little catfish. Uh, Kid Rock was there, uh, apparently got on the mic, decided to get on the mic, and rather than sing in a classic hit, um, he decided instead to drop a homophobic slur because, you know, that's so smart in the age of cameras. So take a look at this. Yeah, he did that, Christian. He just did that and such did that whole thing boy. with his hand, right? Yeah, I mean, such such a bad boy. I don't know if I can handle that much edge. Um, you know, uh, interesting little fun fact, Kid Rock was the guy Casey Anthony and that woman were fighting over. Uh, <laughs> or, okay, that, that was just a funny, wacky make em up But I will say I would bet $10,000 that at least two of those three people have attended a Kid, Kid Rock concert in their lifetime. Um, it sounds, I just, like, it I sounds wonder, plausible. You know what, Ben, did you know that he's got another honky-tonk bar in Tennessee and apparently there was a big issue there where he wasn't complying with COVID restrictions either. So maybe this is his thing. He just wants to constantly like stick it to the man, which was probably the wrong you know, reference given what he was just saying in that bar. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> That is correct. He, he he probably does want to do that and then deny it publicly. But I did know that he had that other bar in 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 Tennessee. I follow everything Kid Rock does. Um, a few thoughts is that he's a lot less Kid Rock looking wearing a tennis hat and shorts. And also he gets on a mic at a bar and is stunned that somebody is filming him. Um, I think that's pretty obvious. He's going to say something train wrecky and it's going to be posted. But I do hope that somebody is able to locate his genitalia because he clearly is in need of someone. He's like, please help me. Nothing's there anymore. <laughs> Except for that, that shirt uh, and the style of shirt. He does look a little kid country club. Okay, let me move on to the French president, uh, Emmanuel Macron, participating in a meet and greet, um, which, you know, politicians are known to do. And then a man grabs his arm, yells out, down with Macronia, which I think is a new dance, uh, and slaps the president of France across the face. Take a look. No, 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 no. Hey, Macronia. Like, this is pretty crazy that the president, I mean, I suppose it isn't. If you're going to get, you know, if you're going to get in with the crowds, the, the crowds will, will do this kind of thing, Christian, won't they? Yeah, I, I like it when countries embrace their national stereotypes. It, uh, for comedians, it just, just saves us a lot of time. Like, if you had asked me, like, hey, did you hear what happened to the French president? I'd be like, I don't know. Did somebody limply slap him and then dramatically yell a political slogan? Sounds about right. <laughs> like, the only thing that could have made this more French is, is if he had slapped him with a baguette. Oh, or a beret, right? 
Could it, yes. I remember when George uh, George Bush had a, a, a shoe thrown at him during a, a press conference in Iraq, and I remember being pretty surprised at that as well. But again, there you can't bubble wrap your politicians. You can surround them with Secret Service, but you can't do much more than that, Ben. This is true. Also, I remember being very impressed how well George W. Bush ducked both shoes. He was very unfazed <laughs> by it. And uh, Macron, not as quick on the uptake there. But I do love that he got a light slap and his Secret Service decided to body grab and then yank him around. Much worse of a physical assault from his own <laughs> security details it did, so it looked pretty violent it did it was like oh you're so strong he did kind of <laughs> he, 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 did, he did kind of uh pull his slap a little bit which i attribute to the heavy influence of mime culture in france <laughs> <laughs> mime. i'm stuck in a box mime right culture. now <laughs> okay, guys, I have to take a break, but when we come back, I want to talk a little Zane Malik in One Direction. Apparently, some bigness went down on a sidewalk. I can't wait to show it. Yes, all the way after the break. If that music doesn't put you in the mood, <laughs> I don't know what else does. But I'm back uh -huh. now with Ben Glebe and Christian Finnegan. Oh. <laughs> I think, was that an accordion? I don't even know, but it sounded very <laughs> Francais. Okay, I'm, I'm leaving the French theme, and I'm going in one direction instead. Zayn Malik, uh, one direction, obviously. And that direction was almost to jail without passing go this week because that former boy band member got into a bit of a fracas on the sidewalks of New York. Shirts came off and chests were pumped and absolutely zero punches were thrown. Take a look at this. I guess there's so many plays on words, Ben, with One Direction, aren't there, when you watch video like this from TMZ? This is, this is true. Um, it's, a, it's a really sad story to see his life going in One Direction. That's straight down the tubes. Um, I'm not going to do any more of these One Direction puns, but I will tell you this. I've never understood whether you're a famous singer or a regular citizen, the move when you're about to be into a fight of taking your shirt off. All, all it does is make you a lot easier to get scratched or stabbed or hurt directly on maybe a nipple. And also, pulling your shirt off, you're now blocking your eyes for a solid two seconds in the middle of a very <laughs> tense moment. I say keep your clothes on. It's more padding. <laughs> it's safer. But no, he wants to show off his pecs while also fake fighting. And I get it. That's why I'm not a famous British rock star. I'll tell you what. I think that's it. That's taken from the Canadian hockey players because when your jersey is pulled over your head, it is a fight technique. You do try to blind them with the jersey. So maybe it's actually clever like a fox. You know, crazy and clever <laughs> like a fox to Christian, I'm telling you take the shirt off. It's just just going to it's just going to hockey blind you. I'm sorry, the shirt will be staying on. Uh, take your shirt <laughs> off, Christian. <laughs> oh, if I had a dollar for every time Women yelled at me on television to take my shirt off. I would have no dollars. Well, if you had that um, dollar, you might end up as rich as Jeff Bezos. Did you hear? He's announced that he's going into space on July 20th, 15 days after he's scheduled to, like, say goodbye as CEO of Amazon. And he's apparently going aboard the new rocket called uh, the New Shepard. Is that it? The rocket designed by the space company Blue Origin. Uh, as far uh, as the status of Amazon after Bezos leaves, I, I have to play for you what Seth Meyers had to say about it. It was pretty funny. Take a look. Amazon's website was temporarily down this morning due to an issue with their cloud computing services provider. But don't worry, I'm sure that flight into outer space next month will go great. <laughs> <laughs> leave, it to, leave it to Seth, Dan. He nailed it. <laughs> he did indeed. Yeah, it's always risky going into space. It does help if you're bald because you're more aerodynamic. So <laughs> that definitely is, an, is a little bit of an assistance. I think it's great that he's doing this. I just wish on behalf of all of the world that he had decided to do this a few years back before decimating the viability of all small businesses in the country, copying their business models and then undercutting them so that people could give a little more money to his own behemoth of a Internet uh, 
marketplace. So a little ill-timed, but better late than never. And I hope he, you know, sends himself off with the return label because, you know, when you don't get the return label, it is a pain in the butt. And that time, you know, it could be really dangerous prime. from. Yeah. Hopefully he's got prime, otherwise he'll have to go until he gets back. <laughs> Good one. Okay, 30-year-old mom uh, in Texas. I love this one. She decided to disguise herself as her 13-year-old daughter, and the reason why she wanted to enter the junior high school, to wait for it, prove a point. She wanted to prove a point about the school security. So this is Casey Garcia. She actually makes it through the halls. She makes it to lunch. She even engages with a faculty member before she was eventually caught. Take a look at this. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Fine on yourself? Great. I like your backpack. Thank you. Oh my goodness. I am going to get so caught. I'm actually really scared now. Well, first of all, you're 30 and you have a 17 year old. So you're, yeah, really young. And yeah, you're like, friends with your kid. So there was another picture of um, young Casey Garcia, and it's called a mugshot because she actually was arrested and she was charged with trespassing. So this is how people are going to see her now, not just her cute social media stuff. I don't know. Is that how you prove your point, Casey? Christian? Are you really just throw that all out there? Throw, throw your crime up there on the social media and expect nothing's is going to happen? I mean, it's it's strange for, you know, Ben and I are from the stand-up comedy community where people well into their 40s dress exactly like that. So there would be no way of knowing that she was a student uh, to us. But also it's like, can we stop taking these dummies at face value? You are not doing some expose. You are not going undercover. You are trying to get social media clout. And you are trying to go viral. That's that's there's no there's nothing more complicated about it than that. I'm, I get so sick of these people trying to couch their little attempts at fame uh, in uh, in some sort of grand political statement. If you want to try to be pathetic and try to be famous, you do what Ben and I do and you grovel and you go on any TV show that will have you. <laughs> that's the proper way to do it. I heard that. No offense to you, Ashley. No offense. <laughs> oh no, I, I mean, I'm, I'm saying, but I'm saying is like we're very thankful for these opportunities because we are trying desperately to, you know, prostitute yeah. ourselves the one out. Thing to the I couldn't country. figure out. She's doing the whole makeup <laughs> montage, and I could have sworn in those mere seconds I saw her putting on a spray tan and then a hoodie. So I couldn't quite make that out, Ben. Like, what was the spray tan for? <laughs> Well, everybody knows if you want to be your daughter, you got you to gotta go a couple shades different than your normal skin because you're related and should have the same skin tone. Nobody knows this woman doesn't make sense in anything she does. This Billy Madison cosplayer who really wants to relive her <laughs> high school days, I get it, or her elementary school days, but it's a stupid stunt. And who's shocked that you put a hoodie on and glasses and a mask and a backpack and you walk in and people aren't? going to instantly realize you're not a, per a kid. It's just a flawed program. I am following her, and I do love her social media now, but um, <laughs> it's a long road to get there. Okay, guys, hold that thought for a second. Uh, when we come back after the break, I want to go uh, Tiger King meets Kate McKinnon, and I, for one, cannot wait. No, this is not a 70s uh, daytime sitcom. It's actually comedy with Ben Gleave and Christian Vinnegan. Welcome back, you guys. A lot of things came out of the shutdown uh, in the year 2020. One of them was the magical phenomenon known as Tiger King. And today, while the Tiger King himself is sitting in a jail cell, Hollywood has, forgive the pun here, pounced. NBC is producing a Tiger King TV show. And uh, here's the best part. It's going to star SNL's Kate McKinnon as the lovely and talented Carol Baskin. And I just know that you've got something to say about this. Okay, Christian, start us off. Well, I love Tiger King. Uh, anyone who's seen my lower back tattoo can attest to that. But <laughs> I do wonder how you parody something that's already so absurd. Do you, you know what I mean? That it's just like, there's such, like the whole time you're watching Tiger King, you're like, oh, that's not a real person. That can't be a real human being. I know. And then you meet the next character, like, oh, well, clearly he's a made up human being as well. And then it's just ridiculous person after ridiculous person. And so 
how do you make that funnier? I, I, I'm genuinely curious. I don't know how to do it, but smarter people than I must be working on this. I'm with you. This is the first thing I thought is it's crazy in its own right. And, and it's the true story. Like you can't get better than that. But Ben, what do you think they're going to do? Because I'll tell you what, Kate McKinnon is no dummy and she is no joke. I mean, she would take a project uh, only if it was fantastic because she can pick and choose. Yeah, she is amazing. She's so talented. I'm only disappointed to learn that she's playing Carol Baskin and not the Tiger King himself. She plays amazing <laughs> male characters. She does an incredible Mitch McConnell. She does a lot of amazing ones. But uh, that all said, she obviously can play female roles as, roles as well, and I support her choice in that. I'm just saying the more extreme character, the better. If the Tiger King role is available, I would love to right now on your show audition for the role. I believe that I could be the Tiger King very easily, and I could tattoo my back Christian Finnegan style. Give me a shot. Come on. <laughs> I swear, I have always thought that if there was going to be a TV version, and now we know there is, that the Tiger King role should be played by David Spade. Who's with me? Mm. I, I would say if McConaughey was maybe into it, I could see him being good. Really? I could see I it. Just, I think... But I think I the actual see. guy looks like David Spade. I always thought it was yeah. David Spade with a mullet. I just think it's a little bit offensive, Ashley, that immediately after my audition live on your show, you said, how about David Spade? Can we get somebody else to do it? <laughs> I'm available. I'm interested. You don't think I look enough like him? How about this? Now I look exactly like Tiger King. Is that good enough for you, Ashley? Is that good enough? Let me have a shot. Seriously. This is unbelievable. Is that a live filter? I had no idea that existed. Where would I find no, that? I must no, that have that. that was all acting. That was completely acting. acting on Ben's part. <laughs> yes, it's acting. <laughs> I'm, I'm like Meryl okay, Streep. Okay, so if, if not Ben and if not David Spade, you really think, was Christian, do you think Matthew McConaughey really? I don't know. He's the first person I thought of. Uh, I'm sure there's some young up and maybe, maybe the, a role this juicy should be given to an unknown, you know, to really sort of make their career on. I don't know. Well, I heard Amen. they're also making a movie of Tiger King, and Nicolas Cage is playing the Tiger King in the movie. I think that's a very fun choice. He, of course, won't reproduce the Tiger King at all, and he will just do his normal Nicolas Cage thing. But it'll be pretty exciting <laughs> to have Nicolas Cage be like, let's go hang out with the Tigers. Can't wait. Okay. Hey, guys. Real quick, I have a minute left, but I want to get a comment from both of you. It's kind of a serious story, but it does involve a comedian who I adore. It's Ellie Kemper. She got into a, like a, a thing and had to apologize for something she did, I don't know, 20-odd years ago. She was part of a society that, you know, had a historical racist past. It had changed its ways 20 years prior to her at 19 years old being queened, you know, a something or other. But it was the Veiled Prophet thing in St. Louis. What do you guys think of that? And again, about 10 seconds, Ben, start with you, and then I want to get a comment from you on it, Christian. Sure. Look, the organization uh, had abandoned its racist ways 20 years earlier, but still why be part of it? Uh, she claimed mm. she didn't know about it, but still had to apologize because what you have to do these days. So she apologized but and 19. for things she didn't know about, but uh, maybe also just don't need to have the crown of any random organization that offers it to you, even though I just was, was trying to become crowned as Tiger King. So maybe I'm hypocritical. I don't I'm know. I'm up against a hard break. Christian, can you give me like five seconds on that? Uh, I just say I think the super rich sometimes they would have sort of plausible deniability about some of the stuff that they grew up around. And now with the Internet, that plausible de deniability has been stripped away because anybody can Google <laughs> yeah. the stuff and they're all suffering I'll the tell consequences. You, it's hard. 19. God, thank God there were no cell phones when I was 19. Hey, Ben Glebe and Christian Finnegan, thank you so much for being with us. It's been fun. Let's do it again. Thanks a lot. Would love that. All right. Have a great weekend, guys. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too.